All right, Fresh, let's go all the way back out to the West Coast and to the Utah Utes. Let's see what happens. We do this one here, Fresh, because we I don't know if we've picked Utah right this season. Oregon, 6-1 and one on the year, 3-1 and one the conference. They play at 330 against the Utah Utes. They're 6-1 and one as well. Their only loss is to Oregon State. At time of record, Oregon is a six and a half point road favorite going into Utah. Over under set at 48 and a half. Fresh, I'm going to let you be foolish first because I know if I pick this game first, I'm going to, I'm going to get ripped apart in the comment section here. And it, go ahead. If you don't like what I'm going to say, by all means, comment on the video here. But man, I don't think we picked Utah right this year. So I'll let you, no. you start off with this one. Um, first thing I have is can Oregon stay alive in the Pac-12 slash college football playoff conversation? Um, you know, two losses in, in the league, it's probably going to be, you know, good night Irene from that perspective. If you beat Utah, it's another feather in your cap. Cause right. They obviously are the two time defending champion. They are a prolific program, whether they're not sexy or not, but they are, they get it done. Um, this is the chance. If you lose, you're done. You know, before November and the rest of the game to sort of fill out the schedule and go to a bowl game and, you know, hope your recruits stay and sign in December and move forward. If you win, it, it really makes football relevant going forward from there. Um, it's a big game for Dan Lanning. Um, hasn't played USC yet, but he's 0 2 versus Washington. He obviously got destroyed by Georgia in his first ever game, you know, last year. Uh, he hasn't had that big win, that, that true. I'm I'm here when Oregon's here when um, that really is just shattered. That really is announced, in, in my opinion. I might be wrong, but I just don't have not seen that one where it's like, boom, Oregon's truly serious. They beat BYU last year. They yeah, they destroyed Colorado this year on national television. He took out the hype, but then we saw him make coaching mistakes versus Washington again, um, and then not win. So where is that? breakout moment where's that finally breakthrough moment for Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks um you know can Bo Nix have a Heisman moment in this game um I, I got a feeling he'll score points versus USC because everybody does but Utah's defense is different if you go out there and put up numbers against Utah's defense and you win in Salt Lake City that's a statement to at least keep yourself in the conversation and to get people's attention because after that loss to Washington people are kind of like all right, Oregon, you know, they're top 15, but are we done taking them seriously? This is a chance for them to re-announce themselves in the race and keep, keep stay relevant and jump back in the top 10 because Oregon State, they're right there. Um, and they have a pretty good resume too. And you could get passed in the in in the state as of uh, being the relevant program. You're, you're the flagship, I get it. But if Oregon State is putting up better numbers and they're getting more top 25 wins and more impressive wins, the, the flavor of the Ducks and, and Bo Nix is going to start fading from the, you know, from the, the steam. And USC's already kind of gone irrelevant anyway. So, you know, what? Where is your statement? When are you going to show up and get the job done? And that's what I want to see from Dan Lenning and Bo Nix, you know, and that entire team putting people down, like going in there and having a, a statement win. Game day's in town. You have a chance of really, you know, showing up. Last time game day showed up at Washington was against when you guys played them and you lost. Can you change the course? Uh, that's what I'm looking for in this football game. We know what your Oregon football team is going to show up. We know Utah. They're going to show up with, you know, helmets on, pads on. I don't care who, what the name is in the backs of the jerseys. They're going to hit you in the mouth. They're going to play great um, defense. They're going to dominate the line of scrimmage. And they're going to grind out wins late in football game. I don't care who the numbers, the numbers, the names change. It's the program mentality that remains the same under Kyle Whittingham. It's been going on forever. They just grind out wins and they get it done. And being at home is a hostile environment. It's not a night kick, but it's still going to be a hostile environment. And that fan base is going to be fired up after their win over USC, recharging them and getting them energized. Game day on campus is going to even make it more. So it's going to be a hostile environment. How does Oregon go in there and get the job done? How do they survive? Um, I've picked against Utah a lot, and I've had egg on my face. But it's not, I just can't pick against Kyle Whittingham. I think they're going to – that defense is going to show up energized. Um, Utah will win. The under will hit. Utes defense will show up. Utah will win the football game. 
um, and still keep themselves alive in the Pac-12 picture. And Dan Lanning will have a lot of questions to answer. All right, Fresh, I'm going to ask you a trivia question. Do you have any uh, – I'll give you within, within 30 days. See if you can get this within 30 days. I'll give you a 30-day window. When was the last time Utah lost in Salt Lake City in a non-COVID year? When was the last time Utah lost in Salt Lake in a non-COVID year? And even then, they only lost once at home that year. I'm going to say 2017 to Oregon. Okay. It is September 15th, 2018 to Washington. Just think how long, how dominant they have been there. I take out the COVID year. They lost once during the COVID year because there w- there's all do- sorts of different th- things. There weren't fans in the stands half the time. There are different regulations depending on where you lived in the country. And it, the Pac-12 season was only a five-game season that year. It happened late. So it is so difficult to go into Rice-Eccles and win a football game. If, you, if Oregon's going to want to do this, Everyone's going to be pointing at Bo Nix and say it's going to have to be Bo Nix. It's going to have to be Bo Nix. Bo Nix is going to have to be the one to win this football game. And I say nay. I say nay, nay on that one. I say it's got to have to be Bucky Irving and and Jordan James. The two of those kids, they're going to have to really pound the rock. Utah is only allowing 78 yards rushing a game right now. If you're going to go into Salt Lake, and win this football game, it's going to have to be on the ground. You're going to have to soften up the Utah defense. You're going to have to force them to kind of bring an extra man in the box because you're getting five, six, seven yards a clip. Dan Lane's done a good job kind of changing the offensive personality there. I don't think he's quite done yet, but he's working on it. It's a nice work in progress there. Can they line up and smash mouth Utah in the face in this? Cam Rising just a couple days ago was ruled out for the season. So Bryson Barnes doesn't have to worry about looking over his shoulder. When is Cam Rising coming back? When is Cam Rising coming back? That's who they're going to talk about. The other thing for Oregon, though, I'm going to tell you this. It's my boy, Troy Clifford Franklin. I need Orlando Jones to show up in a Troy Franklin jersey. I need this to happen. If anyone knows or Orlando Jones, please, I need him. I need Troy Franklin to dr- dress up as Clifford Franklin from the replacement. I love it. Fresh for me. I'm taking a look at this here. Utah's done a great job. Bryson Barnes has played very, very nicely. He's not cam rising. He needs a little bit more, but you got. Vaki over there, who's playing a two-way player. Everything we thought Travis Hunter was going to be and consistently be, Sion Vaki has been playing safety, playing running back, playing wide receiver at times. The kid's doing a little bit of everything. But the name to always remember, we're talking Utah football, and this is this is like a great game of names, is Money Parks, the guy who's cashing checks in the end zone. I like this kid a lot. Money Parks has been a nice wide receiver. We've seen him for the last couple of years. We've loved this kid's name. He he's been a little bit slow lately. He's been hasn't been playing as well. I think this could be one of those games where he kind of reintroduces himself to the college football world. I I'm I'm with you. I'm having such a hard time picking against Utah, but I think Oregon's also very very pissed off right now i think that people have really kind of said oregon really you're not that great and i think they need to remind people that you know what though i'm not picking against kyle winningham anymore i'll be i'd rather be wrong picking against oregon so give me the utes give me the six and a half points i'll take the utes uh i'm gonna ch- i had oregon win this game and i'm sitting here just thinking about while i'm talking about these guys yep nope not doing that as much, and if Orlando Jones shows up on the Oregon sideline, change my pick. That's the only way. Or that's the only way it changes. That was so. classic Lee Corso right there, going up there, 
lean in one direction at the last second, just pulling out the other head of the other team and putting it on and waving goodbye as they go off. That was that was a great. That was a great little, you know, just lure them in, lure them in, and then boom, go opposite. I like it. Yeah, I just can't do it. I can't do it as much as I want to say like we need to. Utah's eventually going to lose in Salt Lake again sometime. It's going to happen. I, I just don't know if it's going to be this weekend. So, 